Welcome back to New Record Day. My name is Ron. If you are into two-channel audio, consider yourself an audiophile or a music lover. Welcome home. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and smack the bell notification so you know when the next video drops. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the PSB T20 loudspeakers that were sent to me by PSB. I'm not being paid to say anything in this review, so all of my thoughts and opinions, they are my own. So, all right, let's jump in and knock this out. At $649, the PSB Alpha T20 is an affordable mini tower designed by Paul Barton. Standing a mere 32 inches tall and only weighing 26 pounds each, <laughs> these little speakers might have us thinking that they're more of a gimmick rather than a bona fide audiophile offering. Featuring a 3 quarter inch aluminum dome tweeter and a waveguide and two 5 and a quarter inch textured polypropylene woofers along with a rear port for bass extension, the first thing I'm going to say is this, of all of the things that these speakers are, a gimmick is surely not one of them. They are short, yes, but don't let their small size fool you. Uh, they pack quite a punch and they surprise me with their confident bass output. Keeping in mind the price of these speakers, it made sense to pair them up with budget price gear and this was a pretty easy pick to be honest with you. <laughs> The IOTA VX is not only affordable at approximately $500 US, it also packs enough punch to wake up the T20s, and more than that, it offers a lot of flexibility. I was able to stream Bluetooth as well as listen to records with the built-in phono, and as I've mentioned before on this channel, what I like most about the IOTA VX is its top end, and that is to say it sounds more refined than most cheap AV receivers and integrated amps that I've, I've experienced so far. Either way, no need to get long-winded about this. The IOTA VX was a reasonable choice to pair with the T20s, and while I did throw higher price gear at them, it doesn't really make sense to chat about that for the next 30 minutes. You get it, right? So let's move on. <laughs> I want to talk about the fit and finish. Uh, the speakers do come with your choice of spikes or rubberized feet that you can easily install or you can just plop these down on the factory installed feet that give the speaker a nice finished look. Also the T20s come in your pick of two finishes which is either black ash wood grain or dark walnut wood grain like we have here. I do think that PSB has done a very good job with the vinyl wrap and I appreciated the textured wood grain look. I think it looks great. Last, the speakers do come with magnetic grills, which surprised me at this asking price, but I do have to mention this. Unfortunately, the little PSB logo stickers those fell off in a couple of days. So I do want to mention to PSB that it might be a good idea to perhaps look into better fasteners for their logos. So how the heck do these things sound? Well, keeping this short and to the point, these speakers are a smooth and rich sounding experience. Uh, the T20s have a well-behaved top end, and while there has been a couple times where I've heard the tweeter call attention to itself, I never felt like the attention that it was asking for ever led to listening fatigue. Paul Barton is a pillar in the industry, and he has my full confidence that if anyone can wrestle an aluminum dome tweeter into submission, he's gonna be one of the guys that can do it. Also, I should mention, before we continue, if you haven't had a chance to check out the sound clips with commentary video that I did, I would recommend doing so because I won't be repeating myself here. So moving on. I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna say it again. The T20s are a smooth sounding speaker, but I don't want that word to be confused with warm. When we start describing something that is warm, it would indicate that the top end actually drops off sooner than 20K. I'm gonna tell you right now, these don't. These do reach out to 20K, but they don't sound forward or analytical. Also, the mid-range is rather lush and offers surprisingly robust mid-bass. The voicing of the speaker is smart considering the price point, and I keep thinking to myself, I would imagine that many of you guys will probably be pairing these with affordable gear, and a lot of that gear in my experience can sound a little tilted on top, so having a speaker that is smooth 
is probably a best bet for most of the folks that are gonna take the plunge with these guys. One notable standout with the T20s is bass performance. If you haven't seen my LOTS video, which is loudspeaker optimization techniques for soundstage, I encourage you to consider this method when positioning the T20s. This speaker is a prime candidate, is slamming these guys back up against a wall is ill-advised, and having room to breathe will offer a much more natural sounding bass response. In other words, these guys can sound boomy if you do back them close to the front wall, so don't do that. Vocals are also worth mentioning, specifically male vocals, which I think exhibit a little bit of a velvety texture and can sound a little bit chesty at times. If you're looking for nothing but clarity and detail retrieval in the midband, I'm hesitant to say that the T20s are gonna blow your mind. Sure, they do offer details in the mid-range, but it seems to me that words like lush, rich, and velvety are more appropriate words to describe the overall voicing of these speakers. All right, let's go ahead and pull up the measurements. The first thing that we're gonna look at is the impedance sweep. On both the woofer and tweeter, I'm showing just above five ohms with some dips as low as 4.5 ohms, as opposed to the six ohm minimum noted on PSB's website. While I'm not gonna argue with the likes of Paul on this, I'm having a hard time calling this guy a true blue eight ohm speaker. And unless I'm reading this all wrong, I feel like this guy is closer to five ohms with a minimum of four ohms. Either way, I'll set aside my ego. Here's the graph. You guys tell me in the comments, what do you think? Next, using Clio Pocket and a six millisecond gated window at 39 inches, I took some shots of the T20 and here is where we landed. The first measurement shows just the tweeters on access frequency response. Yes, there is a rise in the response way up high around 15 to 20 K, but Listen guys, that extension is way past the point of things sounding bright. Adding the woofer into the mix, we have a more complete picture of the crossover integration, and I'll be honest, I was surprised to see a rise in the response at 2K, but again, I never heard anything in that band that bothered me or sounded outright offensive to my ears. Being curious about the woofer, I pulled a Spectral Decay in Clio, and I did take note that there does also seem to be some stored energy around that crossover point. Now, often stored energy can lead to listening fatigue from excessive ringing and keeping my integrity in check. This was not something that I experienced with the T20s, so I'm gonna just simply offer this up as findings of interest, features to consider. <laughs> you guys do what you want with it. Now, knowing how short the T20s are, one thing that seemed important to check was its vertical off access. In this example, I started with the mic on access to the tweeter and then moved the microphone up four inches at a time, starting with what you can see in order as red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. All in all, this doesn't look bad. Granted, that might not mean anything to you unless you have something to compare it to. So here is an example of the vertical off axis of the Anthony Gallo Stratas, which we recently reviewed. And then again, back to the little PSBs. I think having that helps illustrate what good looks like versus, well, I'm sorry, Gallo, <laughs> not so good. Another thing worth exploring is horizontal off access. In this example, I start again on axis and then I move a degree wheel, 10 degrees at a time, which is expressed in the same colors, red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. So listen up folks, this is important. The second loudest thing that we hear is the first reflections. Knowing that we see some consistency from what we see on access to off access means that we can expect the frequencies bouncing off of our walls is gonna match the direct sound. This is a good thing, and it goes to show that the T20s are a well-engineered speaker in this regard. So, yeah, that is my take on the T20s. PSB, thanks for sending out these. I certainly do appreciate it, and I look forward to any future reviews if you like how I unpacked the T20s performance. Thanks so much for stopping by, everybody. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when the next video drops. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video.